My name is Jim Caseman. Welcome back. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. In our last session, we talked about the, the catching away of the church and, and, and uh, the Great Tribulation, that sort of thing. But now we're going we're to shift gears. We're going to go back again to where kind of where we started. <laughs> we started to, with these tapings. And we need to go back. We want to talk about covenant. Now, I know there are some people who say every time they run into Jim Caseman, all he ever talks about is blood covenant. Well, the reason for that is because we are in blood covenant with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Blood covenant is the only way we can get saved. It's the only way we can be born again. It's the only way we can receive the Holy Spirit and become living temples for the Holy Spirit to live inside. The blood covenant is, the, is Jesus Christ came through the new blood covenant as, and resurrected as our eternal high priest. And Jesus is working with us daily, interceding for us, bringing us near to God, and helping us to see that what he provided through the new blood covenant is made available to us today. So we're in covenant with a covenant God. God only works through blood covenant with mankind, the redeemed mankind. Now, there wasn't any blood in the first uh, uh, few covenants we talked about, the blood of the covenant with Adam, or the Edenic covenant, the covenant with Adam, and then, of course, the Noadic covenant, there was blood there, too. Um, and, of course, there was uh, blood all along, but not there was no covenant that was entered into. And uh, because in Ephesians, or Genesis, rather, 3.21, we see that God clothed Adam and Eve with the skins of animals, so there was blood that was shed there. And then we get over into the Adamic covenant and the Noadic covenant. There was blood, of course, shed there too. At the as soon as the flood receded, uh, Noah offered up an offering. And um, let's see. So we had the Adamic, the Adamic covenant, Adamic covenant, Noadic covenant. And um, now we're going to talk today. We're going to talk about the Abrahamic covenant and ultimately the New Blood covenant. Now, when we talk about Old Covenant, we're talking about the Abrahamic Covenant. That's where God entered into Blood Covenant with, uh, with, with Abram. And, uh, and of course, in the New Blood Covenant, we see that God cut covenant with the sinless man, Jesus. All right. Now, in order to understand the importance of of all of these covenants, and I've just named several of them as all I did there at the beginning, uh, because we talked about those uh, somewhat in those earlier sessions. But now we come all the way up to the Abrahamic covenant. And of course, in the Abrahamic covenant, there's a covenant with David, there's the covenant with, uh, that has to do with land, and then there, of course, the, the Palestinian covenant, and then there's also the, the, the um, Mosaic covenant, these are, these are all, uh, they don't replace the Abrahamic covenant. They just all help bring, the, uh, they're all parts of the Abrahamic covenant, I should say. And then, of course, it leads up to the uh, New Blood covenant. All right, so the Abrahamic covenant. Now, when we talk about covenants, I, 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 th I thought it would be important that uh, the Old Covenant is important. Like St. Saint, Saint Augustine had said, you know, the New Blood covenant is contained in the Old Blood Covenant, and the Old Blood Covenant is contained in the New Blood Covenant, is explained, rather, in the New Blood Covenant. So, uh, but if you don't, there's some things in the Old Covenant that are important for us to understand in order for us to really understand our relationship with God through the New Blood Covenant. Because there's principles, as we'll see here, in the Abrahamic Covenant, that stay true uh, for you and I. And we'll get to those, of course, down the road a ways. But the Old Covenant information, uh, when we talk about the Old Covenant, and particularly the Abrahamic Covenant now, that describes the covenant as God gave it in shadow form. Now, the New Blood Covenant writing explains how Jesus perfectly fulfilled the Old and how we relate to him in the blood of the Everlasting Covenant. All right. Now, I have here in, 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 in Luke chapter 24 and verse 44, you've heard me share this and I'll be sharing it more as we go along to remind us. Now listen to this. Jesus has said, Jesus, when he, Jesus said to them, verse 44 of Luke 24, 
These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, that would be the first five books of our Bible, and the prophets, that's major and minor prophets, and the Psalms, or uh, in the Bible that Jesus had, it says the writings. That would include Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, all of that, concerning me. All right? These are the words which I spoke to while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms or the writings concerning me. So Jesus had to fulfill every single one of them. And as I shared in another, uh, uh, another session, the, um, there were, depending on the, on the resources that you use, it'd be over 300 or 350 or 450 references to Jesus in types or shadows, in shadow form, and, and um, in reference made to him in the Old Covenant. Wow. All the way from Genesis all the way through uh, Malachi. There's over 300 prophecies or uh, concerning Jesus in shadow form or types and shadows. And Jesus said he needed to fulfill, fulfill every one of them. Well, the majority of them have been fulfilled. We are, there's not much, there's nothing else to fulfill, really, before the rapture of the church and the uh, great tribulation. So then there's, there, the, the, there's that to be fulfilled yet, the great tribulation and those things, the messianic, uh, then the messianic or the millennial reign with the messianic rule of Jesus for a thousand years. And then, of course, how Satan was defeated and this judgment and all those things at the end and then the new earth and new heaven. But uh, other than that, the majority of everything's already been fulfilled right, right to the detail. Like I said so often, you know, in Zechariah, it talks about Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on a donkey, a colt. And there it is. It explains it perfectly. When you get over to Psalms 22, which is an easy illustration. Psalm chapter 22, the entire chapter, has to deal with the crucifixion of Jesus. And quite frankly, you know, I've seen things in the Psalms 22 concerning the crucifixion more clearly than in the Gospels. As, it's, as the crucifixion is explained in the Gospels. And so, uh, but yet Jesus, that, that, that was a shadow, a foreshadowing of Jesus being crucified. And it was written 1,000 years before Jesus was crucified and 250 years before crucifixion was even invented. And now as you read Psalms 22, it, it, it's obvious that it's explaining, uh, explaining a man that's being crucified. All right, now, Jesus is in the Old and the New Covenants. Jesus is in the Old and shadow form, and then in the New Covenants, everything's been fulfilled, and here he is for having fulfilled everything under the Old, so now he could enter into the New Blood Covenant with God Almighty. All right, now, God gave the entire, what we call the Old Testament. Now, more appropriately, instead of Old Testament, New Testament, it should be called Old Blood Covenant and New Blood Covenant. Because that's how God works. And so, under the entire Old Blood Covenant, it's a picture of Jesus' salvation message. It's a picture of his salvation message. You know, uh, well, anyway. And then secondly, Jesus painted a shadow of himself throughout the Old Covenant so that everybody would recognize him when he arrived on the scene. The entire Old Covenant of the Old Testament points toward Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And so when Jesus and the New Testament writers referred to the scriptures, they were referring to the Old Blood Covenant or the Old Testament. And for example, in John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40 in the Living Bible, and the scriptures point to me, this is Jesus speaking, and the scriptures point to me, yet you won't come to me so that I can give you this life eternal. See? The whole Old Testament pointed towards Jesus so people would recognize him when he would come, when he was born of the Virgin Mary and entered his ministry at about 30 years of age. But yet, Jesus said, he said, and the scriptures point to me. 
In other words, the old covenant, the old blood covenant, points towards me. And you won't come to me so that I can give you eternal life. Well, our time is up. And uh, meanwhile, God bless you richly and everything you set your hands to do. Until next time that we meet, praise the Lord.